are back with another episode of I'm in a Car, and I have the privilege and honor of having Ann Day with me today, so thank you for doing the show. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's my pleasure. Um, Ann is the founder of a group called The Company of Women. That's right. And we met probably, what, four or five years ago? Yes, I would say it's probably that. Yeah. And uh, I had the, the privilege of going to one of your events, uh, I think it was in Oakville? Yeah, we have a conference that we hold every year in Oakville, and that was, you were one of our, our judges. Yeah, I was on a, <laughs> I was on a, a, a panel of judges. With, with different entrepreneurs uh, kind of pitching business ideas to get like some really cool prizing and funding uh, to help them kind of get the thing going. And when I got there, I got a little bit late. I wasn't able to come in the morning. I had to yeah. come around lunch. And I didn't realize what I was like, what the whole thing was about. And then I got there, and there's about 400 women <laughs> eating lunch. Well, it lunch. may have seemed like 400, but it was actually probably about 200. Okay, well, it seemed like 4,000. <laughs> and so I'm walking across this big conference room, and the only other guy in the whole place is like Carlos, and he's one of the waiters. Yeah. And it was, but it was such a cool group. So maybe you could just give us a little rundown of like, you know, where of you've come from. from and, yeah. yeah. And, well, and specifically you, what, what, what were you doing before you got started with that? Well, I've had kind of an eclectic career. I've run a few charities. I worked at uh, the magazine Today's Parent. I worked for government for my sins. And then um, I started my own consulting practice. And I was doing really well. But what I found was it was really isolating and lonely working at home. And my girlfriends didn't get it. Why well, I was busy working all the time and couldn't just stop for lunch or coffee or whatever. Right. And so I decided... <laughs> to um, see, I was sure other women felt the same way, so I put an ad in the paper, I booked a speaker, and I got 165 women out to the first event, and I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm really on to something here. Now, for two years, I kept kept both going, but it's a bit schizophrenic when you're running a, you know, a <laughs> business running 150 page reports for government and uh, having fun in the evening with a whole bunch of women. So I stopped. <laughs> And um, if you fast forward to today, we've got six chapters. We're in uh, several places across southwest Ontario. And we probably put on about 150 events a year. Amazing. Which, which is amazing and exhausting at the same time. Sure, I bet. So when was it that you put that first ad in the newspaper? Uh, 2003. Okay, wow. Yeah, so 15 years ago. And you know, back then we were probably the only game in town. Um, it's funny, the other night someone was asking me what my vision was, and I said, well, back then I just wanted to make some friends. <laughs> right. <laughs> I had no big vision. This was supposed to be a sideline of something, you know, where I would at least bring some women together and we could have some fun and learn together. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So when they asked you the vision now, um, what is it now? I don't, I, I'm not even sure about that, but I think what's happened is as the groups evolved, what we do has evolved. So for a long time, we were just doing business development, and I've come to realize that you can't succeed in business if you're not confident. So we've done a lot more work lately around building women's confidence. And... Um, and also into leadership because, you know, I have a team of 10 people now, so <laughs> I've got to learn how to be a leader. <laughs> okay, that's really neat. So, you know, what started off 15 years ago um, as a, hey, you know, other people must be feeling this way. Yeah. Let's, let's come together and do this as a group. Exactly. Has turned into, um, you know, six chapters, a formal approach to events and personal and professional development. Yep. So what I loved about what you just said, and it's something we talk a lot about um, at Intrigue and with, you know, not all of our clients, but some of our clients, is this idea that you can only um, perform in a role in a way that is consistent with the way you perceive yourself, meaning high confidence, high performance in role. Yeah. And uh, so it's called IR theory, called identity role theory. So when when you start talking about this idea of focusing on confidence and leadership, can you give us some examples of what made you see that and what kind of stuff you're doing these days? Well, um, I'm also, in my spare time, a writer. So I've written several books and one of the <laughs> In books, my spare time. Yeah. One of my uh, <laughs> last book that I wrote with someone else, Amy Voderick, was about how women don't feel good enough. And 
um, it took us three years to write it and we interviewed over 350 women and what we found was it's overwhelming in terms of the number of women that don't feel good enough. On the outside they look as if they've got their act together but right. inside they're not. And so from doing that I realized that we have to give women the confidence to succeed. Um, and so it really came from writing the book and all the research that we did that we wanted to do more about building women's confidence. Amazing. Um, and, and I think to uh, the leadership part, apart from the fact that I've had to take a leadership role, which I hadn't expected, is, uh, <laughs> I didn't sign up for that, <laughs> is that women are, make great leaders. They just have to learn that they've got the skills to do it. That's the right. truth. Yeah, because we're very good at collaboration. We're good at all the soft skills. So um, it's encouraging women to step up to the table and, and you know, take a role. So what's the name of the book? Uh, the name of the book is Good Enough. Uh, and now I'm trying to remember what the second part of the title is. Um, Whatever, the name of the book is Good Enough. Is it it's Good Enough, yeah. And A and Amy Goderick. And where can someone purchase said book? Uh, it's on Amazon. Yeah, okay, and, great. Yeah. So when you did this research and you found the, this this confidence gap. Yes. Um, what is what did that mean though? Like, what? How was it showing up? I mean, you, you summed it up in confidence. Yeah. But what well, were the things? A lot that... of times, um, a lot of women feel overwhelmed. If you think about how we all seem to be online twenty four seven. What do you mean? Um, well, email. Everybody's you know, watching this online. Don't worry. No, I don't. <laughs> I get it. Don't switch off. Watch this one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's very hard to get away from work. And it's very hard to juggle all the things that we have to do as women. Um, often we're the ones that's looking after the children, after the aging parents and so forth. And so women want to be perfect and, the, and perfection does not exist. So we keep setting ourselves up for, for failure in a way in terms of our standards. And we judge ourselves. One of the things that came out when we did our survey was, you know, you, women feel judged and then when we ask them who buy it's themselves wow they're they're busy judging themselves and they're always comparing themselves with somebody else and, oh. and not measuring up but a lot of it too depends on your childhood what's happened to you and, and sometimes life events can can change things for you you know if you if you go through a messy divorce it's hard to feel very positive about you sure that's it sort fair. of shakes your confidence yeah, and, and the foundation of everything exactly. you live with, yeah. right? Yeah, no, that makes a ton of sense. It's it's really interesting. Um, you, you bring up that idea though of them judging, you know. And I think us. I don't think it's a gender thing. It's probably, no, I, it's probably, it's probably cross not. gender, but I mean, just in terms of that, um, the judgment coming from within. Yeah, um, that's really powerful uh, idea if someone can recognize it, right? So then once you did all the research and wrote the book, what were some of the outcomes that in terms of like, you know, content or programming? Well, what we did at the end of each chapter was have a list of questions for women to ask themselves, um, you know, so they could identify what their issues were. And then we would also come up with suggestions of things that they could do to change things. Um, one of the ideas I like the best that we came up with was, I know I'm guilty of this, is I say yes to everything. <laughs> And then think afterwards, well, when am I going to fit that in? And do I really want to do this? And is this just an ego trip or whatever? Right. As to why I've said yes. And so we're say, suggesting, take a pause. Just say, can I get back to you? So that you're not pressured into saying yes to something that you don't want to do. And it doesn't mean you have to answer. No. So that pause yeah. just gives you this space to think. Yeah. That's a really cool idea. Yeah. And super simple. Very. <laughs> I, I've found in my time, and not that it's been a ton of time, but in my time, that typically the best ideas are simple yeah exactly That's cool. and we've come up with a workbook and we've been doing some workshops around it uh, as well so um, it, it takes a certain amount of courage though to admit openly to people that you don't feel good enough about something so yeah that's not easy to take that no, step no no I bet you once you're in the room it becomes a lot easier because you're with oh. a bunch of other people that have done the same well exactly exactly I mean the first time going around talking about it we had to bring Kleenex with us because people would start just <laughs> pouring things out and you know but that's good I mean that's really what company women's about anyway in terms of creating a safe environment for people to be who they're meant to be that's awesome so. and uh, this this idea of 
the saying yes to everything. Yeah. You know, it's it's a, it's been a bit of a common theme that's come up in a lot of I am in a cars. Okay. And in lots of readings I've done, and what I've found is it seems like there is a a yes attitude that works really well out of the gate. So from a lot of entrepreneurs that I've met that have gone from nothing to something, they had this massive yes mentality. But then the ones that really crank it up and become remarkably successful, flip it into a, if I say yes to something, I say no to something else, I need to stay focused, I'm gonna say no to a lot more stuff. Yeah, that, well that's true, because you've gotta make time. I mean, you've gotta unpack your suitcase and leave enough room for something new. Right, but at the beginning we have all sorts of time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we can do everything, right? And then depending on where you are in your career, when you're starting things, you might have a family, maybe you don't. You have tons of time. I know when I started Intrigue, I could say yes to everything because I was only responsible for me. Yeah. And now with three kids and a wife and a home, it's not, I got to say yes to that a lot and say no to other things. Well, you know, I was lucky though. I mean, when I started my, my consulting practice, I was in my 50s. So it's much easier. My kids are grown and gone. Right. Uh, so, yeah. I've just got a husband to keep happy. <laughs> <laughs> and what's his name? His name's Andy, and he has his own business, so he understands the, the pressure. <laughs> sure, okay. Well, thanks, Andy. For, that's a, it's a yeah. shout-out for Andy. You're amazing. Thank you for doing this. So you've, you've come up with some programming, uh, some workshops. Uh, there was one cool idea in terms of the way you uh, framed your, your chapters. Um, so is there anything else that people need to consider or think about when it comes to confidence? Like, what... What builds confidence from your perspective? I think self-awareness, knowing what you're good at and what you're not at, good at. And I mean, I know when you first start a business, you have to do everything. But I mean, I got rid of bookkeeping pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so you, you're not trying to do everything. Although my team will tell me, oh, yes, and you're so good at delegating. But I'm getting there because I realize that there are some things I like to do. And if I, I'm doing everything, I don't have time for the things I enjoy. So... Or best at. Or at best at, right. exactly. exactly. You know, that's, that's really interesting too because it almost seems like um, if, if confidence is, a, is some sort of a, an outcome of self-awareness, knowing what you're good at, knowing what you're not so good at, and other attributes obviously, but just to keep it simple, knowing what you're really good at, doing that, knowing what you're not so good, and having other people do that with you, it almost seems like confidence turns into leadership. Yeah. It, well, I think, yes, it could do. I think the other piece is just surrounding yourself with people who support you and who balance out what you aren't good at. Because, um, you know, I, I always remember uh, Bruce Poon Tip talking at a, a conference we put on, and he was talking about how you, should, you shouldn't keep hiring people that are like you because then you're just sort of cloning. Yes, you get people that agree with you, but that's not always what you need anyway right. to move forward. But you need to hire people that are uh, bring a different skill set. And different perspective. And a different perspective. And then good leaders manage the tension that exists with those idea exchanges. Yeah, I'm working on Which that. is not easy. <laughs> yeah. Me yeah. too. <laughs> Me too. So when it comes to leadership stuff then, um, what kind of lessons have you learned over the last couple of years now that you're leading a team of 10? Um, uh, pick you your battles. <laughs> okay, cool. So tell me more about that. Well, just more you can't get your own way all the time. So you have to pick which ones are really important to you and which ones, you know, okay, well, let's try it. I'm not sure it'll work, but let the person learn their own, right. their own way. Um, so then on that note, picking your own battles. Yeah. What kind of process do you go through to decide what battles you're going to pick? Um, it comes back to the core values of our organization. It, they have to fit, it has to fit with our core values in terms of respecting people, uh, you know, valuing the individual and valuing what they bring to, to a business and to their business. Right. So it's really about respect. And so if it doesn't fall in line with that, then you're yeah. going to fight tooth and nail. Yeah. That's cool. So uh, pick your battles. And then when it comes to the group, um, do you guys have some programming and stuff around leadership these days? We're starting to. Um, for example, at the conference this year, uh, we've got three streams. We've actually streamed it. And so we've got four workshops that are to do with leadership as opposed to um, them all being business or personal development. So 
um, we're starting to introduce that. Cool. And so what kind of topics can people expect to experience? Oh, I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You fake it till you make it. It's okay. Yeah. No one's going to do it. It doesn't have to be at the day of. The day of. Well, one of them's around finding the leader within because I think a lot of women don't see themselves in leadership roles. And so it's looking at, at you know, what you do do and, and putting a different spin on it. Um, that, you know, that those are signs of being a good leader. Uh, another one um, is um, uh, Blaine uh, McCabe, Robert, Roberts McCabe is going to be talking about sort of things she didn't know before she became a leader and right. wished she had. <laughs> that sounds and, like a good talk. Yeah. <laughs> And sort of, oh, I should have signed up for that before I said yes, sort of thing. Right. Um, and one's around diversity and um, uh, sort of respecting diversity in terms of what different people from different cultures bring to an organization. Right. That's cool. Yeah. So when it comes to you know leadership from your perspective, what what's something that's really important? that someone should be considering when stepping into a leadership position, maybe for the first time, or maybe it's a new position, but what is something that people... I think you've got to get to know the people that are working for you and, and get to know them, um, you know, spend one-on-one -on -one time with each person if you can and get to know them, know, and not just their work, but their home and some of the issues that they're facing and so forth. Um, I always remember one of my friends retired from uh, the region of Halton and there were 150 people at her retirement party and that's because she was just so um, she was a good leader right. I and mean, she really did very well if people came to her with a problem instead of her trying to solve it she'd ask them well what would you do right so you know things like that that's cool and I think um, it's a simple practice it'd be like rationally it's simple yeah. but not an easy one to implement actually the, the big person or the, the biggest speaker we've got coming to the conference this year is Lisa Listen okay. and she is the CEO of uh, FedEx Express Canada. Okay. She's the first female leader. Amazing. Yeah and, and she is amazing. She's uh, She actually has just written a book called Resilience and of course the whole conference is about resiliency. So Perfect. And so what's kind of some of the things that she's going to be? She um, she her husband died at 38 of a heart attack and she had four children oh my and, goodness. and she was climbing the corporate ladder at FedEx and it, she, so her book is all about how she managed with that and how she managed you know the death of her husband and all that sort of thing but there's a lot of leadership skills and, and tips in it I mean you could tell from I went and heard her speak actually the other week and you could tell she was really ambitious because she was always asking the person ahead of her, how did you get there? Right. You know. I'm coming. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out, world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's great. So then, how many people are in Company Women now? Uh, we probably have about, uh, I don't know, close to 300. And last year, I think about 2,500 women participated in our uh, events and so forth. I mean, you don't have to be a member to come to anything. Offer. Okay, cool. So then, um, how does one get involved? Uh, our website I, will that go up I, is www.companyofwomen.ca. Yeah, okay. So. And then, where, where are your chapters? Our chapters we have one in Waterloo, Wellington, uh, we have one in downtown Toronto, one in uh, Oakville, Burlington, one in Barrie, one in Niagara and Hamilton, and then we have one now in Durham. With me. Oh, cool. Yeah. So you got a really, yeah, it's like the Golden Horseshoe. Yeah, we're in the Golden Horseshoe. Yeah, that's awesome. And so then what's what's kind of next for um, Company of Women from your perspective? From my perspective, I'm looking at partnering with other groups um, just to, uh, as part of my succession planning, if you like, because sure. uh, I, I don't intend to do this forever. Right. <laughs> so I'm looking at partnering with different groups to take on different parts that we can work together. And um, yeah, I, and also opening up some other chapters, and perhaps looking at a national conference that we could do. Cool. Because our conference is is big, and this is the twelfth one. But I think it's time to up the ante. Take it up a notch. Yeah. Cool. So, in the fifteen years of Company of Women, what's the biggest kind of like highlight or thing that you look back on and say, 
that really made it worthwhile. Oh, I think the biggest thing for me, I, I, I look at myself as a connector, so I love it when I connect women and they end up partnering together or something big happens as a result of my introducing the two of them. Yep. Um, and one person, uh, we, uh, we helped her with her uh, Dragon's Den pitch. Oh, cool. And she got money and, you know, she went forward and so on. So, yeah. So who was that? Uh, Marissa McTasney. Okay, and what was the business? Uh, she did, well, she was Tomboy Trades then, and uh, now she's Moxie. And she makes uh, work boots for women. Amazing. Yeah. She, she, when you go on Dragon's, I went on with her. When you go on Dragon's. So you were on stage with her? Yeah. Oh, that must have been fun. When you go on, when you go on Dragon's Den, you bring props. So she decided to bring 30 women wearing her hard hats and tool belts and so forth. And so we got a whole bunch of women together from company of women and we all went on. And I was I was in the front row about two down from her and I kept thinking, oh God, Kevin O'Leary's gonna ask me what trade I'm in. <laughs> I was dreading that, but he didn't. <laughs> Thank goodness. Right. He was just thinking about the margins, I guess, yeah. and the sales opportunity. So who, who ended up partnering with her? Uh, Brett Wilson. Oh, he's a good man. Yeah, but outside of the deal that was happening in the, on the show, so. Okay but she got a deal with him. Awesome. Yeah. That's super cool. So just having that opportunity, I mean, how many, there must have been, a, like, what, a thousand people over the years that have come and gone? And oh, been, yeah, more than that. More than that? Yeah, I would say closer to about 5,000 over the years that uh, have been through our doors. That's cool. You know, people come for, for a while, and then they either move on, and sadly, some of their businesses don't work. Right. Um, well, that's just the nature of yeah, business. Well, it is. Yeah. It is. Or they move on and do something else, and you know, you don't. We still have some members that have been here since I started. So, who's a good fit for for company women? Oh, well, I used to say anybody, <laughs> any right. woman, but I wouldn't say that. I think you have to be invested in yourself, and you want to learn, because a lot of what we're doing is offering you the tools to get ahead. Right. So, it could be just starting a business. Um, or it could be you've been in business for you know eight or ten years, and I mean I remember once I had a woman that was in the top 100 women entrepreneurs who joined, and I remember asking her. I said, "Why are you joining our group? You know, you're already up there." And she said, "I want to get a life." <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Because she wanted to connect with other women. Because yeah. If you're running a business. She was in IT, so I mean, it was very much a male-dominated business. She just wanted to connect with other women. That's cool, and which is beautiful because it just really represents the purpose of the whole group when you started it. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's it's interesting sometimes. Um, like we've just gone through, you know, three to six months of really refining the vision of the company in terms of what's the dent in the universe we actually want to create now, mm -hmm. and. Uh, people have asked me time and time again like why did you start Intrigue and that kind of stuff and sometimes it isn't uh, the Bill Gates put a personal computer in every household yeah. grandioso vision out of the gate and meaning for us it was let's we want to start a business for the sake of starting a business when we first started yeah. my business partner and Paul wanted to be entrepreneurial and we saw an opportunity to start something so we did and then that turned into something way bigger than we ever anticipated <laughs> and it's something we want to grow across the world um, so now we're getting a bit more intentional by it but I think it's just kind of beautiful to have that simplicity of defining what you did with a purpose I think if, if when you, you know if you've got time if you can let things uh, grow organically they're much more meaningful and they reach uh, you know they really are I'm always listening to what the needs are and that's always changing so from like the membership. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to keep keep uh, your head down and listen. So if there was one thing you could go back and tell yourself many moons ago before you got into the world of your own business and, and starting this kind of group up, uh, what, would, what would it be? You can do it. You know, really. I remember I, the first conference I did uh, as an entrepreneur, I partnered up with this guy and it was a bit of a nightmare, but apart from that, I, I learned, uh, what I learned from it though was I didn't need him. He gave me the confidence to do the conference, right. but I didn't need him. I could have done it myself. And I think that's where women sort of 
need that extra boost, you know, that you can do it. Just believe. Just believe. Right. Yeah. And I hate to minimize it with just because it's not necessarily no. an easy thing to do. Um, but Christine McIver said the same thing uh, when we did the show with her. Yeah. And if, when, yeah. before she started on her own. And she said, like, almost word for word, the same idea. Yeah. We sort of, it's taking a risk, but what have you got to lose? Go for it. Yeah. That's cool. So is there anything coming up right now that people should know about? The conference on June the 5th. <laughs> okay. So what, what is it and where can people register and all that good stuff? Uh, the website's journey to number two success.ca and it's in Oakville at the Oakville Conference Center. We still hold it. At yeah. Okay. Place. It's a great spot. So you know how to get there. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and it's uh, June the 5th and it's from eight till uh, six. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for doing this. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was a pleasure. It's fun. See you guys.